Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Now, if you're a fan of wintry weather, then there is a lot to talk about today with the risk of both a fairly notable cold spell for the time of year and also the risk of snow in places. And actually, although the risk is uncertain, the potential for that snow risk to be across a fairly large region of the UK. We're going to start off by, of course, looking at the overall weather pattern and the evolution of what we're expecting to see over the next few days. Uh, and currently, you can see we're going through that transition period which I talked about last video where originally we had high pressure located to the east of the UK and that's been slowly moving to the west and is now building towards the North Atlantic and up towards Greenland. We also have this cutoff low across parts of Canada and that's pumping some warm mild air further north and this is in effect allowing the air to not kind of feel like a balloon but expand into a fairly notable high pressure uh, by around Sunday Monday and you can see that developing on the European model by Sunday we've got a very strong high pressure over Greenland and of course winds flow clockwise around the ice bars of a high pressure system and if you trace that along those winds you can see we're pulling in a cold northeasterly wind and you can clearly see where that is because uh, the Precipitation is showing up as pink, uh, indicating snow, so the air must be cold enough for snow. And this is by Sunday, uh, so the weekend things are already going to start turning colder as we have the air pushing in from the northeast. And up to this point we do have fairly high confidence in the forecast, and if we look at the ensemble average you can see it's saying pretty much exactly the same thing. High pressure across Greenland, low pressure across Scandinavia and pulling in a very cold northeasterly uh, for the time of year with the average among all the ensemble members uh, being minus 5 degrees at uh, 850 hectopascals which is roughly the same as 1.5 kilometers above the ground. And this minus 5 line is the line we typically look for uh, for being cold enough that any precipitation does fall the snow. So for it showing off showing up on the ensemble averages uh, is a fairly good sign and if you play that through you can see that cold air gets progressively further south but this is the point where things start to become a bit uncertain and we'll see that now if we go through the GFS loop for the kind of week ahead. So, th so here we are on Sunday you can see the cold air is already starting to make its way into the north uh, and we've got showers across large parts of the UK and Ireland but the pink is showing how we're going to have snow showers beginning to develop across parts of northern Scotland and uh, maybe not Northern Ireland but later on that will be the case and that is because of the temperature difference uh, between the upper air minus 5 to even approaching minus 10 degrees and the for the time of year relatively or comparatively warm ocean waters um, and the temperature contrast creates instability leading to showers developing and if we have a look at the uh, UKV model here uh, let's see oh the new one's actually coming out now but if we take a look at the last run you can already see we had showers showing up by Saturday um, across the high ground uh, as you can see here but for coast still rain um, and then as we saw the cold air advance by Sunday, you can see those temperatures are significantly colder here, minus 6, minus 7, and that's correlating to, where is the right chart, that's correlating, uh, oh, I don't, oh, here we go, that's correlating to snow showers more widely by Sunday. Uh, remember, for showers, you can't take the forecast literally, because it's impossible to predict, especially at this kind of range, but we do now have confidence, enough confidence to say that for Scotland, and especially high ground, we like to see the broad risk of snow um, from sh uh, showers, they could be quite hit and miss, but where you do get them, especially overnight, you could be seeing uh, perhaps a couple centimetres of snow, and I expect the metaphors will start issuing warnings uh, for those regions soon. And that's going to be pretty much last all the way from Sunday uh, until the end of the cold spell, which we'll get into later. But roughly, that's going to be, as we think right now, Friday to Saturday. So the duration of that week, northern Scotland and then eventually areas further south into northern Ireland, uh, we'll see a pretty much constant risk of snow showers. And in places, that could build up to fairly large totals. But for most people, that's not going to be the most... Uh, kind of present risk of snow in their mind, that's not what they're going to be worrying about because it's a fairly small region. The risk people are more interested in is longer spells of frontal snow and we do have a risk of that uh, starting to show up on the models. This is me running through the GFS here and you can see that the GFS model expects on Monday to have what's called a slider low shift down along the temperature contrast, if I pull up the chart here, you can see it's expecting this low to develop along the thermal gradient and then move to the southeast 
um, with a fairly tight temperature to gradient to be honest actually bring that minus five which would be cold enough for snow uh, and precipitation on the northern flank turns into a band of snow during the evening on monday so this might seem initially quite exciting if this were to happen this would bring a couple centimeters perhaps even more fairly widely but personally i don't think this is the most likely solution or at least i don't think we should be getting excited about this because there is a lot of uncertainty and also a few factors which are less promising in my opinion but still there's a chance and we'll get into the reason uh, why there's a lot of uncertainty now did not mean to show that this is the chart i wanted to show uh, and this is the kind of storm tracks uh, chart on the gfs model or actually the ensembles of the gfs and the main run is in this bold line here and that was showing a track across far southern england but you can see all the possible tracks of the low it's an extremely extremely large range in fact it covers the entire uh, kind of length of the UK and Ireland. The low could be anywhere from up north uh, here or it could be anywhere due to down south here and a similar chart I can show you on the European model here and that is each of these dots representing a different possible position of the low and you can see again there's a very wide range in uh, the location and also the colour and the colour indicates strength. Uh, the further north solutions would be a stronger low bring the risk of actually gales to some places and the risk of uh, snow and even blizzard conditions across northern scotland the southern end of that would be a much weaker low just even a frontal wave bringing the risk of sleet and snow across the hills of southern england but for most because the low would be so weak the temperature contrast wouldn't be enough for snow to develop and actually we can take a look at some of these different scenarios if we look at the <coughs> sorry if we look at the operational models. So this is the latest 12 o'clock uh, European model. This showed the kind of stronger further north track. This is one possible scenario which brings snow into northern England and Scotland but with fairly strong winds across the south. The uh, midnight run was the much more extreme version of this which actually saw a rapidly deepening low uh, with uh, very very strong winds across southern England and blizzard conditions. This is very very unlikely. Do not take this as kind of verbatim. This is probably not going to happen. The reason for this uncertainty is the jet stream and if you look at the chart from the European model this looks fairly confusing but it's actually not too bad. This is essentially showing all of the jet stream across the entire northern hemisphere. This is the UK here so you kind of have to slightly tilt your head which is a bit annoying, uh, sorry about that. But this shows quite nicely the uncertainty we're dealing with and that's because the bit part of the jet stream is responsible for developing this low is actually uh, the kind of combination of two uh, sections in one and that's this small section here this ribbon of strong winds and this section here with a small trough developing and it's the kind of phasing of these two or the merging of these two which then down the line produces the low into the UK which is on the Monday to Tuesday time period as you can see if the loop is working it doesn't seem to be working or oh, oh, it's loading very slowly uh, yeah so you can see those two merge and then go on to uh, give it kind of lead the next low to form but when you have two sections of the jet stream phasing that creates a lot of uncertainty because it's hard to get the exact strength the exact interaction right and also it's hard if you've got the kind of center of the low if it's in the wrong place even at an early stage in the models that kind of has a butterfly effect where if you go further out it's a completely different track and a completely different intensity so there is a lot of uncertainty about this low on monday into tuesday it's likely to be Monday evening into Tuesday uh, morning if it does occur I mean it will move through somewhere but the point is we just don't know if it's going to be further north um, or further south and the snow risk will be on the northern half and will depend on the strength of the low and the temperature gradients with that so unfortunately we can't give too much uh, detail on exactly what's going to happen with regards to this low um, at the moment but of course I will do some updates and by probably the weekend we'll have a better idea of what's coming and I'll do more videos then However, kind of ironically, we do have a better uncertainty after that low passes. And you can see that here on the GFS Ensemble. Uh, this is from uh, Wetter Zentrale, or, or kind of Weather Central in German. I don't really know why I said that. Anyway, this is the Ensemble uh, chart from the GFS, each of these different lines representing a different possible solution. The closer to uh, the center these lines, or the closer together these lines are, the lower the uncertainty. And you can see all the way into the beginning of that cold spell on Sunday, Monday, we start to get our cold winds coming in from the north there's good confidence then look what happens this big spike that's indicating the possibility of milder air being introduced 
um, which is showing how we're likely to see that low coming into play. But look how much spread apart it is, both in the kind of height, you've got this entire section of possible scenarios, and also the timing. The timing I'm less worried about, I think it will occur sometime from Sunday into Monday, but it is the position which could determine anything from a significant snow event in the south to uh, significant snow in the north, or even just rain and sleet in the south. There's a lot of different possible outcomes. But look what happens as we follow that period. We have very high confidence yet again, and most importantly, this is the kind of marker for snow, and almost every single ensemble member is below that point. So I think we can confidently say from Tuesday and Wednesday onwards, the air will be cold enough uh, to support any precipitation to fall as snow. And this is where things start to become more kind of widespread in terms of the snow risk. If the charts are cooperating, maybe no, they are not. Um, I'll just load this one up instead. Here we go. So you can see by kind of Tuesday, Wednesday, on the European model and also the GFS especially, uh, following the passage of that low, <clears throat> we're now into a much kind of deeper northerly flow, dark blues across the, all of the UK and Ireland. So the snow risk generally increases uh, as a result of the presence of snow showers. And you can see, bear in mind, these models do not resolve snow showers very well, but a snow risk along all northern uh, and western coasts. Even across the eastern coast, we're going to see the risk of showers. More details on that later when we have better high resolution models. Another thing to look out for, which the European model has, uh, is if the winds turn slightly northwest, um, as they do here, you, uh, we're going to potentially see the chance for a streamer uh, down this uh, region here into parts of the Midlands. That's more uncertain. That's one thing that the European model, as I as I just said, had here. That's something to look out for. But the good thing about snow showers, if you're a snow lover, is that they can really be kind of anywhere. And so while the accumulations, if they do hit you, are not likely to be super intense, unless you're in parts of northern Scotland, uh, it is just bringing the risk of snow fairly widely. Though, of course, with showers, everything is uncertain. Another thing to take note of as a possible snow risk is all these sort of small features. They're hard to make out. They're very hard to pick up on the models. But when they do occur, they can sometimes bring a risk of snow. This would be uh, one here on the GFS, um, one kind of here, another small low there, another small low there. All these kind of things uh, in a northerly flow, they move south, they drop precipitation and that falls as snow. Um, so that's a possible uh, snow risk. But like I said, those are very, very uncertain. And there's no point expecting them or getting excited about them unless we know on the day or a few days away, this is going to happen. But that's just indicating the general risk of snow is elevated through the midweek. And that's a fairly nice uh, a fairly nice way to look at that is on the GFS snow probability. Um, <coughs> sorry. And you can see, of course, like I said, northern and western coasts elevated due to snow showers. Like to see fairly significant accumulations here, especially the further north you are. But snow cannot be ruled out for the whole of the UK and Ireland, as you can see there. Um, so if you're a snow lover, just be optimistic. You might get a, a few flurries, and in the best case, you could get... Um, a couple longer spells of snow. Now the GFS had something more interesting again by developing another slider low on Wednesday bringing snow risk to the south yet again. However at the moment this is an outlier if you look at the GFS for the, uh, sorry, the European model for the same time it doesn't have a low whatsoever. <clears throat> so I think the GFS is going out on a bit of a whim here but you never know during cold spells the uncertainty as a whole is increased and the snow the in my experience the kind of most significant snow events often don't appear until the kind of shorter time frames. So right now we know where the showers will be focused, at least, which is northern western coast. We know there is the possibility of snow somewhere Monday to Tuesday. And also we know there is the broad risk of smaller features which could bring snow at smaller time frames. Now in terms of in terms of sorry, how long this will last, well, around the 23rd of November, the model uh, the models, at least, sorry, do show the kind of ensemble spreading apart and things becoming mild again. And I do fully agree with this idea. I don't think it's going to be a surprise where it lasts longer than you think. Um, and that is because if you play through here, you can see a return to westerlies, and that is well supported by the NGO transitioning through phases one and two. And so the jet stream is likely to become a lot stronger. We're going to see westerlies return. And as we move into December, it's looking to become mild again. So that's kind of the update for everything at the moment. Looking fairly promising <clears throat> if you're a cold lover. And if you're a snow lover, there's a couple chances to look out for. But the details are still fairly murky. 
and so we're going to have to wait until the weekend and then into the week to pick up the specifics of exactly where it will snow. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.